Alrighty. Welcome to this week's astrology forecast. This is going to be the astrology for the week of June 6th to June 12th, 2022. You may notice it's coming out a little bit late. Um, I was kind of stranded this weekend and had to put this out a little bit late. But luckily um, for today, Monday, June 6th, there's not really anything at all to cover. I'll pull up the... <laughs> the calendar slide and yeah that's there's literally no aspects happening today monday june 6 so it's uh in general this is kind of like a lull in the astrology um this week isn't particularly active astro wise but this weekend is definitely going to be really interesting um this weekend is going to be a scorpio moon that is interacting with a uranus Venus conjunction. So we're really thinking this weekend about the themes of Mars um, and the themes of Venus because this week the moon is basically starting off in Virgo. As you could see here on my calendar slide, the moon entered Virgo at 12 or at 2.21 a.m. Eastern on Monday. Um, it moves into Libra midweek and then it moves into Scorpio for the weekend during this time that uh, Venus and Uranus come together in Taurus. This is also the, the final week of Mercury being in Taurus during that retrograde. And really this, this last weekend um, was, was that big Mercury station period where Mercury was um, stationing direct right at the moment that Saturn was stationing retrograde and the two of them were making a square in the sky so I'll pull up um, I'll pull up the chart of this moment right now so basically you can see um, over here right as I record on Monday June 6 the sun is right in the middle of Gemini so we're about halfway through Gemini season right now we're getting closer and closer to the longest day of the year, which is the summer solstice, which happens um, in, when does that happen? On the 22nd, I think. Um, and Mercury is just stationing direct, still at 26 degrees. So it's really been at 26 degrees all of last week into this week. Um, or into, I guess, Monday. And Saturn, as you can see, is stationed retrograde at 25 Aquarius. So Mercury and Saturn, as we start the week, are still in a square to one another. They're still basically in a standstill. Um, Saturn is really at a standstill, and Mercury is just starting to move forward. And so this week is kind of about wrapping up that Mercury retrograde in Taurus stuff. It's moving out of the shadow of the retrograde. It's interesting, like the the Mercury retrograde stuff was not super noticeable to me this time around, but the station of it, which was this past weekend, was. Part of the reason that I'm recording this late is because I was kind of stranded up in Breckenridge. I live in Denver now, and I, my band is still primarily playing shows up in the ski towns. So, you know, I was like, okay, we have a show on Saturday night. I'll drive home from the show. After, I'll drive home after the show and then stream the forecast on Sunday. Um, Mercury stationed on Friday. And so on that Friday, I decided to get an oil change. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe this is a good way to... Um, take advantage of mercury moving forward i mean I, I i didn't really think that hard about it it was time for an oil change and i just did it on that friday and then on saturday when i was at my friend's house they're like dan your car is like leaking oil um so my car was like dripping oil whenever i would turn it on and leaving like puddles of oil and so I was like, uh, I just got an oil change and now my car is leaking oil. I have to wait until the mechanic place reopens on Monday morning and then bring it back in and be like, yo, what happened here? Um, so long story short, I wasn't able to get back home to stream this on Sunday. And here I am Monday evening streaming it. And 
on you know this morning when I took the car back in it was just like a minor problem it was like a gasket o-ring that was basically like ripped so it was <laughs> leaking oil but even just in the drive from where I was staying to the mechanic shop like my car was losing oil very quickly and the oil indicator light was on so like I wouldn't have been able to make it back to Denver in that case but the reason I bring that up is because again the Mercury stationing direct square Saturn as it's stationing retrograde was like the only time that I really have like a Mercury retrograde story and and that has happened before to me where when it stations direct that's when I have the Mercury retrograde symptoms the most. And in fact, I think the most memorable time was when my car completely, the transmission just totally broke like the day that Mercury station direct. So that's just a little um, side note, side story that, you know, people think about the Mercury retrograde itself as being the time where things going to go crazy. But in this case, it was like, Mercury was moving back, back, back. It stopped to move forward. Saturn was moving forward, forward, forward. Stopped to move back, and they're in a ninety degree angle, and they're just it's it messed up my travel plans. But like I said, as I as I pulled this back up, Monday, June sixth, there was nothing even to report. So we'll look at Tuesday, June seventh, and. Basically, the thing that's developing right now is this moon trining Venus and the moon trining Uranus. And this week, again, is all about Venus and Uranus coming together. Tuesday the 7th is also the day that uh, the moon will be in its first quarter phase. So the moon has been growing in light, waxing throughout this week. And next week, next Tuesday, will be the full moon in Sagittarius. So again, we're out of eclipse season I feel like I feel like last week I'm, well I mean when I try to just keep my pulse on the collective there's a lot of stuff I'm seeing about crit- criticism of pride month um I'm even kind kind of on that <laughs> that train just because I think like it's gotten a little out of hand and they're they're pushing it on kids there's weird shit with kids and even when you just look at like the TikToks of these blue haired, like non binary teachers, the type of shit they say to like kids just makes me very concerned that maybe this whole thing is um, a little bit out of hand and a little bit counterproductive. But, but that's like the only main thing I'm seeing. But I still feel like May, all of the stuff that went down in May, the economic stuff. There was a big crash in the stock market in May. Now we're kind of recovering from that. There was the school shooting. There was the Roe versus Wade. And now that we're out of that eclipse window, I feel like we're kind of we're kind of reflecting and focusing on that as now that this is a normal lunation, not in an eclipse. Lots of planets are dignified right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yeah, this I think this is going to be more of just like kind of like the the stuff that I'm seeing in the news is like kind of like making f- or pride month critiques and more chatter about the school shootings and the gun thing and all of this craziness. And again, I'll pull the chart back up here. Again, uh at this point of the week Mars is at nine degrees of Aries. It's it's kind of separating from its conjunction with Jupiter. So I feel like, although like this, you know, we're saying be productive, be pumped up, be energized as Mars moves through Aries. Um, Mars Jupiter is kind of separating at this point. In the early part of the week here, Venus is at 11 degrees Taurus, and then um, Uranus is at 16. So by this weekend, they will come together. Um, Again, Mercury is chilling at 26 degrees Taurus. So still a lot of focus on Taurus and Aries. So that means a lot of focus on Venus stuff, because Venus rules Taurus, and Mars stuff. Um because Mars rules Aries. And again, this week, when we get to Wednesday, um, 
the moon will move into Libra, which is Venus's sign. So again, this week, think about relationships and think about uh, the 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 warrior aspect of life, the the urge to fight, the conflict, the energizing aggression of Mars. And so, let's look at Wednesday here. Did I miss anything from Tuesday? I mean, again, Tuesday is the first quarter moon. Uh, The sun squares the moon at 10.48 a.m. Eastern, and late night into the morning, the moon does trine Venus and and Uranus. So Wednesday, early in the morning, um, moon will be opposite. The moon in Virgo will be opposite uh, Neptune and Pisces. The moon will trine Mercury in the morning at 5.55 a.m. Eastern. That's kind of an interesting way to kick off Wednesday, which is Mercury's day. Again, Mercury is moving slowly away from its square with Saturn. Um, it is direct. And by by Wednesday, it's at 27 degrees um, of Taurus. And then again, it enters Gemini direct next Monday. So again, this week is that period where Mercury is in Taurus is kind of um, a little bit more not ideal. And it is getting closer to trining Pluto this week too, which is going to happen on Friday. So all week think, again, think about the themes of relationships and and conflict, Venus and Mars, and think about um, Mercury and Pluto because this we're, we're, we're slowly inching out of that difficult Mercury Saturn square that happened on the weekend when they kind of passed the baton Mercury station direct Saturn stationed retrograde and that again was when when I was stranded I couldn't leave my desk I couldn't leave to go home uh, because I had vehicle problems that couldn't get resolved so anytime anytime and 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 Interestingly, I have a friend who was very like stalled as well. He was having um, some health stuff that kind of stopped him in his tracks. <laughs> and I think um, I'm really seeing that the Mercury station this past weekend might have slowed other people down and may- maybe caused kind of a standstill. But this week, as we separate out of that, Mercury is slowly gaining its momentum. And then next week when it enters Gemini, that's going to be when when we can really do the mercury stuff. So I think this week on the and I'm talking about this as I speak about Wednesday, I think this week is a good week to really focus on the the mercury stuff, the planning, um think forward, forward thinking. The retrograde was thinking was about planning, about reviewing and the, this now we're thinking forward and as we're thinking forward, Mercury will try and Pluto. Um, so yeah, again on Wednesday, the moon enters Libra at 11.22 a.m. Eastern, and then it'll oppose Jupiter and Aries in the evening. So that's, again, <laughs> the uh, the Libra-Aries axis is being activated. That's a Mars-Venus duality. And then this weekend, the Taurus-Scorpio axis will also be activated, and that's another Venus-Mars duality. So I feel like this week is going to be significant when in the relationship department, and particularly as Venus moves closer and closer to Uranus. Uranus is like a, a shocker. It's a destabilizer. It's a revolutionizer. It shakes things up and... It takes you out of your comfort zone, I would say. So like if you're thinking about relationships, especially with the Mars stuff with the moon in Mars with the moon in Scorpio this weekend and with the moon in Libra midweek opposing this Jupiter Jupiter and Mars in Aries, you know, that's very sexual. This is like a very um relationship and uh libido focused week. So keep that in mind. And Pluto is kind of also in that department. Pluto can be very libido related. And Mercury will make a trine with Pluto on Friday. So again, the midweek is not super crazy. Um, Wednesday evening, 
pay attention to the big activation of the big expanse of Jupiter thing in the emotion department as the moon opposes Jupiter and Aries as it's moving through Libra. Um, and Thursday at 8.15 a.m., the moon will be opposite Mars. So, so again, same thing. Mars, Venus, duality, relationships and conflict or relationships and lust in many ways that could happen then 9 56 p.m the moon trines the sun uh sun and gemini moon in libra that's a nice air trine so and if i pull this up where we'll show where mercury is again moving forward on thursday still at 27 um and then so by Friday, that's kind of when things get more interesting. Friday, so this will be this again. This will be a, probably a shorter forecast because there's not a lot to go on or to cover. But um, Friday again, Moon trine Saturn in the morning, so that's an air trine. Um, moon square Pluto in the afternoon. So, yeah, the moon in Libra is squaring Pluto in Capricorn mid-afternoon. And then at 4.40 p.m., um, the moon enters Scorpio. And I'll pull the chart back up here, too. So, Friday is when we focus in a little bit more because there's more activity on Friday. So, I hope this weekend... I, th I could see this being like a fun weekend, an exciting weekend, and maybe some drama, maybe some disruptions. Um, but here on my chart, so here it shows in the afternoon on Friday. Um, oh, my, my freaking chart is cast from Breckenridge. So another slight Mercury direct station error. So my, my chart here is on mountain time instead of eastern time. I usually keep it on eastern time because that's what the calendar shows. Um, am I able to change that? Can y'all even still see this? I'm just going <laughs> to... Give me one second, people. Um, I'm just trying to keep things consistent on East Coast time. Um, as And my computer that I'm doing this from is kind of like a crappy little... Um, a crappy little HP baby blue PC so that I can have solar fire on on the screen which only runs on windows um there we go now we're from new york all right so on friday the 10th um i'll go right to the time that moon enters Scorpio so really the weekend begins <laughs> right at the weekend truly re begins at 4 40 p.m okay eastern that's when the moon enters Scorpio we're getting close to the full moon status the moon is going to look kind of full doesn't really go full until next Tuesday but at 4 40 moon enters Scorpio as we can see Mercury is at 28 Taurus and that it's trining Pluto at 28 Capricorn. So, you know, modern astrologers say that uh, Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio. I don't, te from a technical point of view, agree with that. But the symbolism of the planet is very much in line with the symbolism of Scorpio. So your mind starting on Friday is going to be very like intense you're gonna be thinking intense you're gonna be feeling intense the moon in scorpio waning or uh, wax i always mix it up waxing in light so you know the moon is growing in light going growing towards that full moon and 
Venus over here is at 15 degrees Taurus and then Uranus is at 16 degrees Taurus. So lots of lots of thoughts like the moon is in a Mars ruled sign. So we're intensely feeling our emotions are in the intense depths and um, it's Mercury is at the end of Taurus trining Pluto final hurrah like this whole period of Mercury being retrograde in Pluto or in Taurus tr has been really trining Pluto the whole time. So our thoughts for this whole period um, for the past few weeks have been really our, th our minds have been really in the intensity zone. Mercury has been, you know, it's, 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 a little bit further out now it's still kind of in a square with saturn in aquarius um it's within three degrees of that it'll i think the real relief will happen after this weekend but this weekend is intense um but it's it can be intense in a cool way in a fun way because venus here coming together with uranus it's building all week but really friday into saturday is when it peaks and then as the moon in Scorpio moves through it, it will oppose that. So we'll really feel it like that, that alignment will happen and then the moon will activate it. So when I'm thinking about this week, I think, again, take advantage of like the chill factor of the beginning of the week. Monday, there, there wasn't really shit going on. No, nothing to report on Monday. Um, Midweek when the moon's in Libra, we kind of feel that Aries action with that opposition. So that's kind of wetting the whistle for the weekend relationship, sexy stuff with the Scorpio moon and the Venus Uranus thing. And then again, Saturday, it's Saturday evening, depending on where you live, um, that, that it's all going down. As you can see, 6.57 p.m., Venus is conjunct Uranus. We'll be feeling it all day, but it's really peaking at 6.57 p.m. Eastern. Then the moon in Scorpio at 9.04 p.m. is officially, <laughs> between 9.04 and 9.15 is, is opposite both of these planets coming together. So let's show that on the chart. Saturday... I'm just going to fast forward. Um, yep. So this shows 8.43 p.m. The moon is at 16 degrees Scorpio. Venus is at 16. Uranus is at 16. So, hmm. I mean, the Venus Uranus by itself, which is is going to be happening all day into the evening Saturday, that's, you know, shaking things up in the relationship department, changing the dynamics of a relationship. It could be super energizing, getting you super manic in the relationship department. Um, your partner could be, from your point of view, going a little cray. <laughs> You yourself could be going a little cray. Then the moon in Scorpio activating this is, again, the moon doesn't really like to be in Scorpio. So it's this like intense emotional energy that I, I don't know if I want to call this a good or a bad thing. It's definitely going to be a game changer. And it's definitely this moment at, you know, around nine o'clock Eastern on Saturday night. I'm going to be playing a show, so we're going to be rocking and rolling at that point. Um, you know, nine, nine o'clock on Saturday night, there's going to be something really intense peaking at that point. And it's good. I mean, it's probably like Venus is good in Taurus. The moon, though, the moon isn't as good in Scorpio. So, I feel like it could it it could be a a shakeup period of intensity that might not that might feel really good or might just be too much to to enjoy and but maybe the fruits of it will be a little bit better after the fact you know um, so think about it think about what's 
is, is your relationship status changing? Is the dynamic of your relationship changing? Uranus has changed. It, are are you, you and your partner like really tuned into each other and really ready to like break the rules with one another? Um, and, and are you ready to go deep? Because the moon in Scorpio is deep. It could be outside of the actual relate like romantic relationship department too it could be you know a business partner a a family member or a friend it's any relationship dynamic could be under the umbrella of venus but the one the go-to one that we think of is romantic relationships so let let uranus do its thing because when you let uranus do its thing um it's usually an upgrade but we don't necessarily enjoy rapid unexpected and unpredictable change but that's what uranus does and if you embrace it you'll usually be like yeah i'm in a better place i'm upgraded i've leveled up um so that can happen in the relationship department but with the moon and scorpio opposite that it's gonna be intense um it's gonna be deep it might be painful it might be scary but just let it ride um this is again one of those moments where the stars are aligning and it's happening on saturday night (laughs) so maybe uh if you're maybe leave a comment on youtube or social media and let me know how it went for you because i'm interested to see like how it turns out so Saturday, um, 3.45 a.m. Eastern, the moon will, will be opposite the nodes. 10.44 a.m., it squares Saturn. So maybe a hangover on Sunday eh, might be a little rough. Be careful. Um, trines Neptune, sextiles Pluto in the morning into the afternoon. Then up, then at the very end of it, before it leaves Scorpio and enters Sag, it opposes Mercury. So Sunday is still, um, I'll show you on the chart here. As we move into Sunday, um, as the moon moves into later Scorpio, Sunday is still going to be intense too because like, that opposition with the nodes that happens late night, early morning, that's kind of intense. That's um, maybe bringing like a, a flashback to what was going on in May because the actual eclipses took place in May on that nodal axis. Um, and here, Mercury is right at 29 degrees Taurus. So... Sunday is really the last phase before we turn the page. And then we have a very big bang at the start of the next week with Mercury entering Gemini and then with the moon going full in Sagittarius, which is, you know, opposite of Gemini on the wheel. So we'll pull the times back up again. Like Sunday, um, Think of like think about what went down Saturday night, what changed, what peaked on Saturday night, and then th- again, this whole week with Mercury stationing direct at the end of Taurus, it gets activated on Friday again with the trine to Pluto. It's still going to be trining Pluto on Sunday, but Sunday when the moon opposes it, that's like the final you know stamp of a um i want to say stamp of approval but like final like check in the box of like what are you going to do this week in the mercury department before mercury enters its own sign of gemini and really starts speeding up and getting things rolling mid-june is a good i mean that's like why we're um i I don't know did i even announce that we're going to be streaming pluto pill on tuesday um the 14th so I'm going to make announcements of that, but it's going to be streaming on Rockfin. It's a Rockfin exclusive. If you want to check it out, it's me, SJ, and 
SJ Anderson and Cam White doing Q3 of 2022. We'll review what's been going on in Q2. We'll regroup, make some more predictions. And again, on Pluto Pilled, we go deep. We It is, it is not PC. It is not... Um, the it is not mainstream it's we're we're being real and we're we're behind a paywall for a reason and if you're interested in that rockfin you know is a great place for creators it's a great great way that creators get to monetize their premium content and it's um, a free speech platform so we're going to be putting that on there um and yeah check it out but the reason I bring that up is, you know, us astrologers kind of pick days to do stuff. And we did pick that first day that Mercury's in Gemini and it's very close to the Sagittarius full moon. I mean, we'll be recording it kind of like right during the the peak full moon in Sag. But Sunday, you know, at 6.31 p.m. on Sunday, June 12th, the moon leaves Scorpio and then enters Sagittarius. And then things really do get optimistic next week um i think this is still an optimistic week i think relationships are going to go through big changes this week um you know it's a week of change it's a week of moving forward it's a way it's a waxing moon that the light is growing and then it's going to peak next week during this like nice moment where um the full moon is in sagittarius mercury's back in gemini Venus and Mars are still dignified. Saturn is still dignified. Mercury is kind of out of its square with Saturn. Saturn is making its journey backwards towards the um, earlier, I guess, towards the mid degrees of Aquarius. And then we ride out the rest of the month of June and make the best of it because this is really on paper a good month it's probably the best month of the whole year may was an intense month you know it was still good in many ways but lots of things changed in may and we're really keeping our eye on fall of 2022 where scorpio season in the fall of 22 is gonna be real intense but again think the, the 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 planets we're thinking the most of this week again are Venus and Mars, just because the Moon is in Libra midweek, Scorpio during the weekend. Venus is highlighted by being shocked by Uranus, so allow the changes to abruptly arrive on Saturday night. It's that Saturday night Moon opposition to the Venus Uranus conjunction is definitely like the highlight of the week the climax of the week and Sunday is wrapping it all up, wrapping up all of the Mercury and the end of Taurus as the moon opposes it at 5 39 PM. And then when the moon enters Sag 6 31 PM, it's the beginning of like the, the kind of more cool stuff that's happening next week. So I think midweek this week, take it easy. Um, think about all the relationships that might be going through changes this week and think about how the warrior spirit of Mars is constantly in that dynamic. I mean, Venus and Mars are the yin and yang, male and female planets, and they are highlighted this week for sure. Um, And share any stories you have on like the Mercury stuff because I'm wondering if anybody else had Mercury stationing direct problems like i did again i apologize that this is out a little bit late i don't really have i mean i do have an excuse my car broke down it was dripping oil but it was a quick fix i just had to be patient and wait until today and uh yeah so i'm gonna leave it at that um if you guys want to book a reading with me go to cosmickeyspodcast.com slash readings I've been doing a lot lately and really enjoy connecting with you guys and helping you guys learn about your chart, learn about your destiny. Um, it's it's a pleasure for me to help people through the, the art of astrology. And there's lots of ways to just make astrology a part of your life. Watching these forecasts, thinking about the week ahead is making astrology a part of your life. And when you when you learn your own birth chart, 
you know, you are having something objective, which is the, the chart that is cast at the moment of your birth. That is an objective thing. And we're, we're taking a very symbolic interpretation of what that means for you. And, you know, the goal for many of us is to know thyself, you know, to understand what's going on in your internal world. And th- this is just a tool of self-reflection. Self-reflection is the process of looking above as above and then looking at yourself, your, in- your internal state below, so below. So CosmicKeysPodcast.com slash readings to do that. And I hope you all enjoy this week. Um, make some fun plans for the weekend. Make some, I don't know, first dates for the weekend. Make, you know, take take a risk this weekend and let things be shaken up so that you can kind of upgrade yourself and um, get to that next level. And next week's going to be awesome. I'm excited to talk about that. So I'll, I'll catch up with you then. And until then, have a great week. Take care, guys.